Not that long ago, I did a video. By not that long ago, I mean about two years ago on emergency makeshift fallout shelters. This is a follow-up to that based upon a series of questions that I've been asked over those two years. It's sort of, if you give a mouse a cookie situation, where in this case, if you make an emergency fallout shelter, you're going to need an emergency air filter to go with it. This Urban Sentinel, and let's get into it. Now for clarification, this video and the related video on the emergency fallout shelter are specifically for the reduction of radioactive particles, fallout, coming into your shelter, into your residence, your apartment, wherever it is, which of course that would have a dire and adverse effect on you as a living being. If you are, however, in this case, in the blast radius, you are nothing but sugar and cinnamon ash all over the place. This video will not apply. If you are within the concussive or the heat wave radius of that explosion, once again, this video and the connecting video will not apply because the house, the structure, whatever you're in is toast or it's collapsed on you and you're trapped underneath and the amount of radiation that you're receiving even as you are slowly dying is not going to be able to be filtered out in any way, shape or form. With that being said, let's move forward. Now with the prior video, the emergency makeshift fallout shelter, the video was specifically about reducing the inflow of radioactive particles. Now remember, radiation is not tangible, it's an energy, but things can be irradiated. Any type of material, any type of matter, whether it be smoke and cinder from burning cars, buildings, or human beings, that is what gets irradiated. You can't irradiate water, but you can irradiate the particles that are suspended in the water. So a nuclear blast goes off, even if ash hasn't immediately fallen into a nearby water source, there's living creatures, there's dust and debris in that water that gets irradiated. Same thing with the air. The air by itself, the oxygen by itself, not a problem. All the fine particulate matter that's already in there that we breathe in normally anyway, but our bodies can process it and we have no problems. It's when you get those harsh chemicals, those aerosols, those toxins, and of course, radioactive material that you take in, that's when you have a problem. So the key question was based upon sealing up your shelter, whether it's the inside most interior room of your house or apartment that has no outside windows or an area below ground, such as a basement, where again, you want to put as much distance between you and the outer walls of wherever you're sheltering for the purpose that the energy from the radiation, the radioactive material does emanate and it can emanate several inches. So if you're effectively sleeping right next to an exterior wall, even if that wall doesn't have windows, you stand a far greater chance of accumulating a dose of radiation that permeates through that wall. Same thing with windows and doorways. If there are cracks and small gaps, air can get through and particles can get through using some type of filtering system will reduce the physical particles down to a certain size that could pass through. Since the particles themselves is what is irradiated, the more you stop from coming into where you're at, the greater you reduce, not completely eliminate, but significantly reduce any particulates in the airflow that passes through. Now, I'm going to be using this particular filter, which is actually for a separate project, but it fits right along, dovetails into this video. This is Filtreat by 3M. This one happens to be an advanced allergen, and I'll give you a little close up on the filtration levels. So this, as you can see, filters out everything from lint, pollen, pet dander, down to bacteria and viruses. So it's fine enough that it can stop those small particles and anything that's been irradiated, and if it's smaller than that, it's going to get through. And again, this is not a 100% stop. This is a reduction of the particulates that do come in. Because the key thing to address is you still need airflow. Now, normal construction for commercial and residential properties, unless it is site-specific, unless you are actually building a hermetically sealed bio chamber, most co common construction, nothing is airtight. There are small gaps to the point where, yes, slipping a piece of paper through might be difficult, 
but you can close a door in most houses and there's still going to be air circulating through, whether it be the materials, the porousness of the materials itself, whether it's the drywall, the wood door itself, even when the carpeting comes up to the bottom of the door jam, the carpet itself, the fibers are all still porous, air still moves through. So you can't really suffocate in that aspect. You have to have something remove more oxygen than what is available to you to breathe, or you have to add in something additional to that, such as when you're breathing out. Basically, if there's not enough oxygen coming in and you're breathing out more carbon dioxide, then sure, that will be a case like that. So let me show you the project that I'm going to be working on so you have an idea of how you can maintain a certain level of airflow to your shelter or the area immediately surrounding your shelter, almost like a buffer zone. Now the project I'm working on is my oldest child has allergies and does not sleep with an air conditioner because wakes up similar to me with you know a golf ball size sinus inflammation with AC on. So she usually just has her window open and if it's really hot, sometimes a fan. With that being said, I have a window fan and it's matched up almost perfectly to this filter. And with a few other simple implements, a piece of cardboard, some press and seal sort of cling wrap. I've got two different size strips of uh, foam insulation and of course, some duct tape. So the back of the filter is going to be facing the screen towards the outside, obviously, or rather the back of the fan. The filter is going to be effectively attached behind it. What I'll end up doing is centering it so it gives full coverage across this area, and then I'll seal up any of the extra gaps with the duct tape around it so it blocks it out. Now, yes, this will reduce some of the airflow force that you would feel on the other side of the fan on the interior, but it will still allow air to come through because, again, the filter is not a zero permeability filter. That's effectively the whole point. It will reduce the airflow and it will catch and trap a lot of the pollen, a lot of the dust and things like that and the allergens on the outside of it. And that's the key reason why you want the filter on the outside is if you place the filter in front of the blades on the interior, it's still going to do the same job. But the problem you're going to have is any contaminants when we're talking about radioactive material are now going to be adhering and stuck within the workings and the confines of the fan, the blades, the housing, everything else like that. Put the filter on the outside portion of it. Yes, again, the amount of radiation that could still potentially get through in the particles will still be less of an issue in comparison to just simply having the window open. Now with that, I'm gonna show you what I'm talking about. So I'm just gonna do this real quick one-handed. Now, the filter itself would be attached to the fan, so it would be on there. At that point, this particular fan almost broke the damn thing, locks into this side here. And then as you see, it's got this little area and an extension, if I can get it down a little bit, that locks in this little accordion panel. Now, the filter would, as I said before, be lined up, more centered. I'd seal this area up with the duct tape and using a little bit of the foam, and then you bring the window down to the point where it makes contact under here, and that seals that end up, and you'd have duct tape over here. The cardboard, simple enough, I'd fit it in, slip it down inside there, and up underneath here. Soft by a little bit, it's cardboard, you can trim it, you can fold it, and then again, seal up along the edges with duct tape along the bottom. So as you'd be able to see, you can see light through there, you can see the filter on the other side, and this is going to help block out a lot of those particles. Now, the foam that I showed you, the key thing up here, this channel, and then of course, along here, where the other window is, is where there's going to be gaps. So what you wanna be able to do is pack the foam down in there and then use the duct tape to bridge over from this window up onto the glass, sealing up, getting it in there, getting it behind there. 
So by filling in those cracks and along the track rails, you eliminate the extra air that would normally come in from getting up there. If you have a window AC, you already understand that, that you put that in so that way you don't lose that cooler air and throw off the air flow. Now, of course, you're thinking, well, that's great while the power is up, but if a nuclear bomb is detonated and the power goes out, that window fan is not going to be of any use, which is true. The key thing you want to remember is look at the size spacing of your window because they make those filters in different size measurements. You can get one that will fill the entire window width-wise up to at least a certain height, and you can do pretty much the same thing. You'd work it and fit it so this way it takes up the space at least on the lower portion of where the screen is, and then you adjust that lower half of the window to rest on top of it and you seal it up that way. So you still have a filter layer that will prevent a lot of that air with the particles coming through. Now, with that being in mind, you dovetail that with, let's say, using this kitchen, that's the outside air source coming in, but the shelter would still be someplace away from the outer walls away from any other windows so we can still effectively take in air but we're not directly sitting over here by the window putting our face up against it trying to take in breath it still allows a certain level of oxygen and air circulation with again the purpose to reduce and it's really simple if you have a house that has windows open and you've got radioactive fallout blowing through the air it doesn't have to look like giant snowflakes it doesn't have to look like uh, your charcoal grill ash all over the place. It could be very fine dust particles. You could be two, three hundred miles away from where the actual blast went off. But if you've got your windows open and it, the air's coming in, you're taking in all of those particles, all that radiation, and you yourself and anyone in there are going to become contaminated and you're going to start to suffer the effects of radiation sickness and radiation poison. Even as the level of the radioactive material starts to reduce itself, because you'll hear FEMA and other agencies talking about safe levels. Yes, there are safe levels of radiation, which are on a basis of time, how much time you spend out in an environment where that radiation is at a discernible measured level or how much you accumulate over a certain period of time. A dosimeter, for example, shows the accumulation of radioactive energy in an area, whereas a Geiger counter tells you this spot is hot, that spot not too hot, this other area over here not hot at all. Without those instruments, you just have to go on the basis that if you happen to know that the city that got nuked was 50 miles away from you and the last thing you remember for the weather forecast was the winds were blowing from that direction towards you at five to eight miles per hour, you have an idea that anything that comes your way within the next hour is going to be contaminated and you have to keep that in mind for the next seven, 14 days to ensure that one, other devices haven't gone off, but also two, that any radioactive material that's accumulated has had a chance to reduce itself. Now, I wanted to show you this. The other reason why I have that plastic wrap is specifically for this area here. Wherever this amount of plastic is, as you can see, there's gap here. There's a little bit of gap there because this material has to accordion fold in and out. So it's not locked into it because it actually changes its shape, the uh, angle down here of the pleats. You extend it out to the spot where it's going to fit and lock in. Once you've got that measured out, you have the cling wrap on it and you can wrap it up and then pull it out because the plastic's flexible enough that it'll adjust and adapt for that half inch to one inch movement that you might have. So you effectively seal the open edges of the actual binder area itself. And then when you place the cardboard on top of it and you continue to seal up the area with the duct tape and you have the window down and everything else sealed up, you're going to basically make only the ventilation areas here the way that the air is going to come through. And once again, this material is not going to 100% stop all particles because in order to do that, it would have to stop the air from coming through. But considering that the things that are going to be irradiated are going to be stuff from debris, from burning materials, from the ashes of everything and everyone that got incinerated, plain and simple. So it's going to start to accumulate and it's going to start to trap that on there. Now, what you also need to take, take into consideration is, let's say the power does go out, those fans are gonna sit just like that. They're not going to move. You could, 
if you have the appropriate size filter, as I said before, just have a filter on standby fitted for your entire window up to a certain height because you do not want to have the entire window open. You still want to keep a lower profile. You don't need that much window space to let the air in. So you set up a larger filter that will take that area or even use two of them if you need to and seal them up. So if that's something that occurs, you can open your window, place them in, seal it, put all the trappings up at the top area like I showed you before, and you'll at least have a window where the air can still pass in and you can still get some air circulation so you don't sit and sweat to death inside as you're hoping that the level of radiation dies down enough that you can then safely make your way out to wherever it is that you need to go. Which honestly, separate thing altogether, you shouldn't go out even after a week or two. Just ride it out and wait because you're going to kick up dust that may have accumulated layers of more radiation. So even though the levels may be lower, walking down to see what you can scavenge from your corner store or walking over and getting to a friend's house, you're going to be building up very minute levels, but higher and consistent accumulated levels of radiation in the contaminants all over the place on your shoes, your clothing, everything else. Now, if by chance you do have to venture out, even if you've managed to stay inside two, three, four weeks, you want to be able to make sure that you don't breathe anything in. So you want to have a gas mask. Now, the key thing with the gas mask and the most important thing is the filter. You want to have a filter preferably that is seaburn rated. That's chemical, biological, radiological, and nuclear. With that on, your gas mask properly fitted and sealed up and preferably wearing some type of protective outer clothing. Even if you're using those disposable rain ponchos and rain pants and you know Rubbermaid dishwashing gloves and you're wrapping yourself up with duct tape and you've got three layers of plastic shopping bags over your shoes so you don't track and bring in any more contaminants, especially back to your place, back to your shelter, that's something you can consider. But with the filter that's up there, if that's all you have and you have an extra one, you could actually cut that. Now, the thing that you have to know is there are wires inside that filter that help it hold that pleated shape. So you're going to need more than just regular paper cutting scissors, maybe some snips or something else, but you can actually cut it utilize the filter itself and form it into a mask if you've got one or two bandanas or if you have any type of n95 mask that can be placed over it as an additional layer of filtration for you to breathe through if you have to go outside so with those few simple things you can make shift an air filtration system for you that will help prevent or reduce the amount of radioactive material you take in in that situation and also good to note because it is designed for allergens uh, just in general like during the spring summertime high pollen season sort of things like that all of these things are stop gaps to help reduce and eliminate the potential hazards to you while you try to mitigate and navigate through whatever's going on and that's it for now i'll catch you in the next one